Ron DeSantis wasn't just the front runner at the beginning of the year. In many ways, he was the presumptive nominee. That's what I called him. He had every opportunity to imitate George W. Bush's campaign in 1999 or William McKinley's. He had the rarest fortune to be able to run in America what's called a front porch campaign, meaning he didn't have to travel the country. He didn't have to leave his front porch. The Republican grandees were set to come to him to seek his favor, to support him, to endorse him. And each time they stepped across the plane of the Florida governor's mansion, it would have been a physical act, a physical act of coming nearer, closer to DeSantis, a physical act of walking away from Mar-a-Lago and walking away from Trump. And it would have given courage to scores and scores and scores of people who were on the fence. Simply, if Ron DeSantis had been present and observant, what he would have done is what Donald Trump did after becoming president-elect in Trump Tower. Every day, American leaders from Mitt Romney to Mitch McConnell to everybody else you could think of passed through the lobby of Trump Tower on the way to the executive offices to meet with the president-elect. That's all that Ron DeSantis had to do. They would have come, and then more would have come, and Ron DeSantis would have consolidated his lead. But that's not what happened. Watching Ron DeSantis's belly flop onto the empty concrete of a proverbially empty swimming pool has been astonishing. It is very, very rare to see a loss of 30 points. There hasn't been a debate. The campaign hasn't effectively started. And he's collapsed under the weight of his disordered personality. The newspapers are filled with stories. Ron DeSantis doesn't like to talk to people. Ron DeSantis doesn't like to make phone calls. Marco Rubio talked about the fact in the Wall Street Journal story that details the 30-point polling collapse, that he hasn't talked to the governor of his state in months. It's no surprise what the results are. When Trump announced, there was Mike Lindell, Madison Cawthorn, and Dick Morris. That was it. There were no congressional endorsements. Not only does Trump have a score of congressional endorsements a few months later, while his behavior has become more outrageous, more dangerous, and more unhinged, eight of those congressional endorsements are from the state of Florida. Ron DeSantis just isn't ready for prime time. He has no path to a comeback. He's an extremely poor debater. It's over. Ron DeSantis could have been the Republican nominee, but he will not be. When you look at the Republican field right now, what's most astonishing about it, there is no field. Donald Trump has cleared the field. It is an astonishing political act, and it speaks to the deepest of corruptions in our American society, culture, a corruption that has wholly infested one of the most important institutions, not just in today's America, but in the history of America. And that is the Republican Party founded in 1854 to oppose slavery. The Republican Party has become a vessel of one man's narcissism, his outlandish ambitions, it has become a threat to the United States. What it stands for is the destruction of the American constitutional order, which will lead to the collapse of freedom and liberty and will take from our children and grandchildren their fundamental rights. We owe our children what we were given and what we were given was an imperfect country ready to be made more perfect. What we were given is a country that is always becoming, and it is our moral obligation to pass it down and to pass it on and to preserve it for as long as we can. And everything is threatened by the reelection of Donald Trump to another term 
as president of the United States. Here's a simple truth. When Donald Trump was running for president, there was a tremendous question at hand. Was this really what the guy was like? A lot of people, really led by Jared Kushner, made a lot of phone calls. And what they said to all of us who questioned Donald Trump's behavior, his integrity, his statements, was he's acting. He's in a steel cage match. He's an outsider. This is the only way that he can win. But once he gets the nomination, he'll level out. He'll settle out. He'll become more stable, more normal. And then they said the same thing after he became president-elect. And then they said the same thing after he became president. But the Donald Trump you see is the Donald Trump we'll get again. And that man is incoherent. He's dishonest. He's reckless, unfit, dangerous. There are no mysteries left in American politics. What is it precisely that Donald Trump stands for? This moment in American life is a profoundly dangerous one. There's no mystery. Donald Trump didn't change overnight. Today is not the new episode of a reality show. Donald Trump's 35,000 lies told between the years of his presidency matter today. They're not erased this morning, nor is the extremism of the Republican conference. It is crystal clear what it is they seek. What it is that they want is political power, and they want it at any cost. What Donald Trump and the Republicans did was break the compact that has held this country together and is the foundation of the American way of life. The foundation of the American way of life is very simple. We, the American people, pick our leaders. Our leaders don't tell us when they're ready to go. We tell them. There it is. It was among the most radical departures in the whole of human history from what came before. The idea that we would have in this country to choose our leaders' elections. And what Donald Trump said in 2016, in 2020, the only election that's fair is one that I win. And here's the thing. In a two-party pluralistic democracy, both sides need to be prepared to lose an election. When you lose an election, it requires you to acknowledge the legitimacy of the process, to acknowledge the temporary nature of your victorious opponent's power, and to wish them luck for the country, for America. What Donald Trump has done more than any person in American history since the Civil War is stoke a cold civil war. He has turned the American people against one another. His vanities have unleashed a toxic meanness across America. He has debased our culture, our values, our children have grown up watching the most wretched human in the country serve as its leader. Anybody who thinks that this does not provide a moral injury to the nation, to its citizens, is deeply, deeply wrong. Ron DeSantis is a Trump imitator. He's a bully. He's a proto-fascist. Donald Trump is an entertainer. Ron DeSantis is an introverted politician. And it seems that Republican voters are going to go for the fascist entertainer over the introverted proto-fascist Florida governor who spends his days fighting Florida's largest employer, Disney, and attacking Mickey Mouse. This wretched era in American politics will end one day. But it doesn't mean that it will end well. It could end 
through an election with the destruction of American democracy. Donald Trump is a liar, an accused criminal, a credibly accused sexual assaulter. He has given succor to our enemies. He has cheered the invasion of democratic nations. He has cast doubts and degraded the most important alliances for peace, prosperity, and freedom in world history. And he's coming back to finish the job. There is no election that will ever be more important than stopping Donald Trump from returning to the office of the president of the United States. It's reported in the news that Joe Biden, age 82, with an approval level of 39%, will seek re-election. It is an act lacking humility. It is an act that does not put this country first. And should Donald Trump be re-elected over an 82-year-old Biden, it will be Joe Biden's fault. And it will be his entire legacy. This moment requires the wisdom of a broad political coalition to come together, not to advance dogma, not to demand the repetition of profoundly stupid slogans like defund the police. It demands the humility to understand that people who disagree with each other must work together to stop somebody who wants to stop all of the disagreements and all of the debates about everything because his take on it is that Donald Trump should be in charge. Donald Trump should make all the decisions. And that's not American democracy. That's a perversion of it. We face in this country a dangerous new era. We have not put down the Trump era. Incredibly so. Donald Trump is back. And Donald Trump is the front runner. And Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee. And make no mistake about it. In a country where the economy is very rocky, an overwhelming majority of the American people think that it's not good for their family. Can Donald Trump be elected president again? He can. If he is, we can kiss our democracy goodbye.